fire every bullet, every bomb, everything they have on their airplane. And then after that, they're to find the biggest target and ram their airplane straight into it. It's kind of that last and final major uh, weapon that they can use against us. And we're not doing that. We're not prepared to do that. We don't want to do that with our guys. Um, and so we realize that we are fighting a very different enemy. Uh, we know that that is going to be true if we were to try and launch a land invasion into Japan. We realize that the Japanese, and again, a lot of this has to do with their culture. Um, and I think we might have talked about their culture a little bit in class, the fact that for them, it's all about bringing honor and glory, not to just their family, but to their country. And if that means sacrificing your life, you need to be willing to sacrifice your life to bring honor and glory to your family. And so that comes down to war. They don't believe in being allowed to be taken as prisoners. And if you believe that you are going to be taken as a prisoner, then it is deemed the honorable thing. Um, to take your own life instead of being captured. So, a couple of big battles. Irojima happens in 1945. Uh, this is the one where we have the memorial. You see the picture of the, what is it, one, two, three, four, five, five Marines that are putting the flag up. Anytime you put a flag up somewhere, that's just kind of representation of you won, right? That is now your territory, your victory. You're claiming it in the name of your country, right? So we lose 6,000 Marines that day again. The death tolls are going up, 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 up. Uh, Roosevelt's going to pass away April of 45. The Battle of Okinawa happens in 45 as well. Again, death tolls keep going up. And our biggest concern is that if we do launch a land invasion, it will be a high cost of life. And we're not really willing to, um, to sacrifice that many of our soldiers. So it comes down to Truman. Truman's sworn in office. Truman has to make the decision of what we're going to do to end this war. And so the question of, are we going to use that new weapon that we have been secretly creating through the Manhattan Project and actually testing small amounts out in the Los Alamos, New Mexico desert um, of the atomic bomb? And so the question is, um, we could choose to launch a land invasion and have a large number of casualties uh, on both sides, or we could use this new technology and sacrifice zero human lives and just try and take out your opponent. Um, and we choose the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki because those cities um, are, are mostly factory cities. Uh, we are not taking out the capital. We are not focusing on cities that have large numbers of civilians. And on top of all that, and again, the book Unbroken or the movie, uh, they are showing and talking about how pilots are dropping several weeks before this. Uh, leaflets, brochures, telling the people, warning the Japanese people because we feared their, their government wouldn't tell them of what was coming. You know, uh, we are planning on using this weapon of mass destruction. Please encourage your, your government to uh, make the decision to surrender or this is what's coming. So uh, we don't hear anything, of course, the Japanese government. And I think part of it is they were trying to call our bluff, you know, but... Um, we won on that one, right? So anyway, so the first bomb is going to be dropped August of 45, um, August 6th of 45 in Hiroshima. Um, the Enola Gay is the name of the plane that drops that bomb. And if you can even imagine, the pilot is just uh, scared to death. He said he felt like he just could not get out of there fast enough. And he said that the bomb, even though it hadn't even hit the ground yet, just the, the impact of it was already pushing the airplane, and he said he feared for his own life, that he didn't know if he was going to be out of, out of there in time. Uh, he is, he makes it home, it's all good. Um, so we wait, we wait three days, and we hear nothing from the Japanese government, so we're like, all right, here comes the second bomb. We drop the second bomb, August 9th of 45. Again, we give them a couple of days, the Japanese finally surrender, and again, we would only accept an unconditional surrender. The Japanese do surrender. Uh, we have what we call VJ Day, Victory Over Japan, not in Japan, but Victory Over Japan Day. 
uh, that happens. I think, I forget the day. I should have put it on there. I know I have September 45, but without looking, I don't remember what the exact day is. But anyway, so they do issue uh, an unconditional surrender. And if you take a look, it shows the picture of the pilot in the plane. And then the next picture shows you, uh, there's no city left, you know, like that's not hills you see in the background. That's ash and dirt and leftover debris. I mean, it wipes everything out before it even hits the ground. I mean, it's, I mean, people are evaporated into ash, ash. I mean, just it's, it's, you know, you're taken out instantly. So anyway, we do make the decision that we have to um, help them rebuild. We're not just going to leave them in ruins like that. Uh, we have the Yalta Conference that happens in 45, the big three. But this time, it's Truman instead of Roosevelt, Churchill, and Stalin. They meet to talk about not just, you know, we focus more on what's going to happen in the Pacific by ourselves. But they talk about what's going to happen in Europe. The Russians don't want free elections like we and Great Britain do. So that's going to be a big conflict interest. Um, the UN is officially created. Um, it was kind of the, the brainchild of what came out of the League of Nations, but the United Nations is created. Again, it's supposed to be a world peacekeeping organization, and we hope to prevent, um, again, major world wars after this. The Potsdam Conference happens July 45. This is where we decide to divide up Germany into four sections. And you're like, how do we get four out of three? France, Great Britain, the United States, and the Soviet Union all split up. Um, however, the U.S., Great Britain, and France decide to unite our pieces just because that's not what we're interested in. We're not interested in revenge and, and some of the things that were wanted after World War I. Whereas uh, the Soviet Union's like, no, we want our piece of the pie. We want them to suffer. We want revenge. We want reparations out of this. And that's going to cause what happens when we get into the Cold War. Uh, we have the Nuremberg trials that take place to where Nazi leaders and scientists and doctors are put on trial for crimes against humanity, for everything that happened during the Holocaust. And, of course, war crimes as well. Several leaders are executed. Um, some choose to take their own life prior to their trial. Um, but a lot of executions do take place. Some were not ever able to find. But anyway, all right. So to end with uh, what happens with Japan, General MacArthur is sent in to help govern Japan as we are assisting them in rebuilding and putting the pieces back together. Uh, we help, we go in and help uh, westernize Japan, uh, industries, factories, railroads, things like that. Uh, we do help them to establish a democratic government. Surprise, who would have guessed that? Um, and we help them to write their new constitution, guaranteeing basic rights, like what you would see in our civil right or first 10 amendments, the Bill of Rights. Um, so, and fun fact, this new constitution actually still exists in Japan today, and we are very close allies. Um, Japan has since then rebuilt those cities, and I think it's Hiroshima that they have a, um, a peace memorial. Um, and I forget what the name of it is, but it is it's a memorial established for all the citizens that did perish that day when the bomb was dropped. All right, so that's where I'm going to stop today, uh, and I'll see you guys in just a little bit for a review of your worksheets.